This is the 16th module on British literature and the module is titled contemporary literature. In this first lecture, we are going to talk about a few women writers, very brilliant, illustrious women writers. The first is Muriel Spark. Muriel Spark, born in 1918 in Scotland, lived up to 2006. And she was a very significant post-war writer who shared the concerns of William Golding and others, uh, such as evil and how human beings respond to extreme situations, etc. Many of her novels are set in female institutions where personal identity and value are at stake. And uh, she is most remembered for her novel, The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie. It's a 1961 novel. Uh, before that, her first novel came in 1957, that is The Comforters. The first novel was by a dystopian novel, Robinson. Well, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody is the story of a teacher in a girl's school, Miss Jean Brody. She trains a set of six girls of whom she tutor to think differently, to question. She makes them intellectually far above the rest of the other girls. And this is not something that will be appreciated, of course. Eventually, these girls, one of them betrays Broody herself. So, this is a novel that shows uh, how far ideas are acceptable to the society, what is meant by education, and especially the role of women in the society. These are all interrogated in this novel. There are many other novels of Muriel Spark where we have stories about women, such as The Girls of Slender Means. Girls of Slender Means is set in a girl's hostel. The Mandelbaum Gate, The Public Image, The Driver's Seat, The Takeover, uh, Loitering with Intent, a far cry from Kensington. In these novels, we see relationships, friendships, threat to people, uh, and very strange situations like murder and you know wanting to be murdered and things like that. Muriel Spark has also written, uh, she has written a lot about evil. She has also written Memento Mori, which is a 1959 early novel actually, before uh, Prime of Miss Jean Brody, I just remembered. Memento Mori is set in a, an old age home where people are all getting a phone call saying, remember, you will die, Memento Mori. So, there is a foreboding of evil and death throughout her writing. Her uh, autobiography is called Curriculum Vitae. Like Muriel Spark, Iris Murdoch has also written a lot about women, but she is more of a philosophical writer. She writes more about the inner life of individuals and raises serious moral questions. Her first novel is Under the Net. It is a story of Jake Donahue, a young writer from London. Very famous is The Bell. It is about uh, Dora Greenfield, a girl, a, a woman separated from her husband at that time. She is going and living in the Imber community, a religious community, a lay community, religious lay community. And uh, there, there are some symbolic things that happen a new bell is going to be installed in the convent. An old bell is discovered, huge bell, not small, is discovered from the Imber Lake and there is a story behind it. Dora Greenfield also has complex relationship with characters in the uh, Imber Court. It is an important novel. A Severed Head 
is a novel that was turned into a play by J.B. Priestley. The Unicorn is a, play, uh, is a novel with gothic elements. Uh, the protagonist narrator is employed in a castle, a remote castle by a lady, Hannah, her name is. And it turns out that Hannah is actually a victim and a prisoner in that castle. The Black Prince by Iris Murdoch is a story of Bradley Pearson, who is a Hamlet-like character. Then The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch got the Booker Prize. It is a story of a retired stage director. The next novelist we'll discuss, the third one today, is Doris Lessing. She was born in 1919 and died in 2013, pretty long life. And it was quite late when she was in her 90s that she got the Nobel Prize. Uh, she was born in Persia, now Iran, grew up in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Her first novel is actually set in Rhodesia, The Grass is Singing. And Doris Lessing also had uh, a tryst with communism and Sufism. The Grass is Singing uh, is based on a murder. After that, she has written Children of Violence series. It's a series of five novels about one character, Martha Quest. And uh, there are these, these five novels are Martha Quest, A Proper Marriage, Ripples in the Storm, Landlogged, and The Four Gated City. The last one, The Four Gated City, is post apocalyptic science fiction kind of uh, novel. They have asked about it in uh, National Eligibility Test, I remember. Well, uh, she has also written some other psychological novels like this, like The Golden Notebook, Briefing for a Descent into Hell, Memoirs of a Survivor, etc. The Golden Notebook came from 1967. The Golden Notebook uh, was published in 1967, I mean. And uh, it is a breakthrough novel and a feminist classic. The Golden Notebook uh, is a very postmodern novel. It is the story of Anna Wolf, her friend Molly, Molly's ex-husband, their son, etc., other characters. What is interesting is that Anna Wolf and Molly are not characters in the Golden Notebook novel. Actually, within the Golden Notebook, there is another novel called Free Women. Anna Wolf and Molly are characters in Free Women. Imagine this is the novel Free Women. You divide it into five, cut it up into five. It's a conventional novel, cut it up into five, intersperse it with some other narratives, you get Golden Notebook. Now, what are these narratives? In this story, Free Women, you get the story of Anna Wolf. You, when you look at the condensed page of Golden Notebook, you have Free Women 1, followed by excerpts from four differently colored notebooks, black, red, yellow, blue. What is happening is, Anna Wolf, the protagonist of Free Women, is a writer. She has already written a novel, Frontiers of War, and she is now suffering from writer's block. To overcome this writer's block, she is writing in four differently colored notebooks. Did you understand? So, Free Women 1, excerpts from black, red, yellow, blue. Free Women 2, excerpts from black, red, yellow, blue. Free Women 3, excerpts from black, red, yellow, blue. Free Women 4, excerpts from black, red, yellow, blue. At this time, after all this writing, she is able to resolve her differences. She is able to come to terms with her selfhood. So, after the four notebooks at the end of Free Women 4, you have writing from a golden colored notebook. In that golden colored notebook, Anna resolves her issues. Her boyfriend Saul Green, an American writer, is also writing in the golden notebook. After that, Anna doesn't need any more notebooks. So, the novel ends with Free Women 5. Did you understand? Uh, this is highly postmodern. It talks about uh, Anna's uh, relationships from a markedly feminist perspective. So, that is about um, um, Doris Lessing. Next, we have to talk about two sisters, A.S. Byatt 
and Margaret Drabble. As Bayat came into prominence in 1990 with her novel Possession. Possession is a novel written in a Victorian romance style. Possession is written in the style of a Victorian romance. What happens in Possession is that there are two contemporary researchers, there are two Victorian poets, male and female. And uh, the contemporary researchers are on a quest to uncover the story of these Victorian poets, Randolph Henry Ashe and Christabel Lamotte. They were in love secretly. Randolph already had a wife and they had a child. Randolph died thinking that the child died, but the child did not die. The child turns out to be the grandmother of the female researcher of the contemporary time, that is Maud Bailey. The researcher is Maud Bailey. Roland Michel and Maud Bailey, they are the researchers. So two lives, I mean, two periods paralleling, four lives paralleling. This novel has connections with uh, philosophy of pre-Raphaelite brotherhood. And uh, this is a magnificent novel that won the Booker Prize. Well, A.S. Byte has also written other novels like Angels and Insects, The Biographer's Tale, A Whistling Woman, etc. Her sister Margaret Drabble is even more famous. It was Margaret Drabble who said about Doris Lessing that Doris Lessing wrote inner space fiction as well as outer space fiction. You know why? Because I did not mention that before. Doris Lessing wrote outer space fiction also. That is not very major, that is why I did not mention the series of outer space novels that Lessing wrote are called Canopus in Argos. So, Margaret Drabble said space fiction about Doris Lessing's uh, works. Margaret Drabble is also uh, the editor of the seventh edition of the Oxford Companion to English Literature. Her novels begin with a summer bird cage followed by the millstone, Jerusalem the golden, the needle's eye, the realms of gold. These are all novels that show intricate relationships and uh, women's problems. There is a trilogy also that she wrote, The Radiant Way, A Natural Curiosity and The Gates of Ivory. Important is The Witch of Exmoor which is the story of uh, a gothic story of an old woman living in isolation like a witch. Also important was the earlier novel, The Millstone, I did not talk about it. The Millstone is about an academic woman. She has a one night stand and gets pregnant. She has sex with a stranger and she decides to bring up the child. She, she decides to deliver the child and bring up the child. The peppered moth is a uh, partly a memoir, partly a novel about three generations of women and one of the characters is Margaret Drabble's own mother. A pure gold baby, patterns in the carpet is a book that she wrote about the history of jigsaw puzzles. Can you believe that? Now the last writer for today is Angela Carter, another woman writer. She. Uh, is a magic realist novelist. She employed magic realism and feminism also of course. She has written Bristol Trilogy, Shadow Dance, Several Perceptions and Love. These are the three novels of Bristol Trilogy. Very famous are her novels The Magic Toy Shop, uh, The Infernal Desire Machines of Dr. Hoffman, Nights at the Circus, Black Venus and Other Stories etc. Magic Toy Shop, these are all very bizarre novels with violence and murder and torture, mental trauma. The Magic Toy Shop is about Melanie, whose uncle makes eccentric life-sized puppets. And uh, she acts as Leda in uh, Leda and the Swan, the uncle sets the house on fire, etc. The Infernal Desire Machines of Dr. Hoffman is a surrealist, picaresque novel. Nights at the Circus is about Sophie, a girl who hatched from an egg and she works as a trapeze artist in a circus and she is going to sprout wings it seems. Don't take all this seriously, 
this is magic realism. Hello, welcome. Are you ready for the second lecture of the 16th module on contemporary literature? We are going to talk about a lot of other writers. We already talked about the women writers before. Let me start with John Fowles. John Fowles is the famous author of the famous novel, The French Lieutenant's Woman. He was born in 1926 and lived up to 2005. He, you know what he did? He taught English in Greece and uh, he is somewhere in between modernism and postmodernism. John Fowles's career started with the collector. He, it is about one man called Frederick Clegg. He's a clerk and he's collecting butterflies. The Magus is another postmodern novel uh, which is set in Greece. You know why it is set in uh, Greece? Because he taught English in Greece. Are who? Our John Fowles. So the collector and the Magus followed by um, the French lieutenant's woman. The French lieutenant's woman is a Victorian style romance. Do you remember A. S. Byatt's um, novel Possession? That was also a Victorian style romance. And uh, the French lieutenant's woman is the story of Charles Smithson and Ernestina. They reach Lyme Regis. Lyme Regis is a quaint little port. It is a seaside town. Not port, I think. Very rocky seaside town in um, Britain. Near Dorchester. I have been there. All along the streets you will find fossil shops. Because this place is famous for fossils. And all this plays an important role in this novel also. Charles Smithson finds a woman uh, standing on the rocks and looking out at the sea every day waiting for her lover to come. She is Sarah Woodruff, the French lieutenant's whore as people call her. Charles Smithson uh, falls in love with Sarah and this novel has a famous uh, multiple ending whether Charles will accept Sarah and live with her or whether he will live with Ernestina or with neither of them. That is an ambivalent ending of the novel. Then uh, came the Ebony Tower, Daniel Martin, the tree, Mantissa, etc. These are all uh, highly postmodern in their treat treatment. There are two novelists that I want to introduce to you to. Malcolm Bradbury and David Lodge. Well, they, they don't ask questions about these writers very much, but they are major writers. David Lodge is a critic, as you know, and he has written novels also. And both these writers, Malcolm Bradbury and David Lodge, wrote campus novels. Malcolm Bradbury has written novels like Eating People is Wrong, The History Man, Cuts, a very short novel that is set against Thatcherite England. And then David Lodge has written a famous David Lodge trilogy where one novel, Small Romance, sorry, Small World, an academic romance is very famous. Uh, next writer is J.G. Ballard. He is a, a, a science fiction writer born in Shanghai in China. That is why his famous novel, Empire of the Sun, is set in Shanghai. There is a, ma a boy growing up in Shanghai. This is a famous movie. You might have watched it. Then uh, J.G. Ballard has written novels like The Drowned World, The Burning World, The Crystal World. These are all novels, science fiction novels, uh, showing apocalyptic future. Uh, Crash is a very bizarre novel where symphorophilia or car crash fetishism is discussed. This novel has been made into a famous movie by David Cronenberg, the uh, Canadian director. So, and also cr about crash, Jean Baudrillard, the postmodern thinker, has written a famous essay. In, uh, so that brings us to Julian Barnes. The next writer for today is 
Julian Bonds. He was the son of French teachers and that made him a lover of French uh, literature and culture. Uh, Julian Bonds got Nobel Prize, sorry, 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 Man Booker Prize for The Sense of an Ending. That is not his only major novel. He has written a lot of other major novels also, such as uh, Flaw Bear Sparrow, England, England, uh, Arthur and George, etc. Flaw Bear Sparrow is about Jeffrey Brathwaite, a man who is traveling in search of that stuffed parrot that inspired the French writer Gustave Flaubert. The question raised in the novel is, is there an original? Because he comes across like 50 different parrots, all claimed to be Flaubert's original parrot. So can you really find the original? Is there a real? Uh, that is the question raised in that novel. A. Julian Barnes's first novel was Metroland. He has also written Staring at the Sun. A History of the World in Ten and a Half Chapters, etc. The sense of an ending is narrated by a retired man about his childhood and uh, friends. Next writer is very famous now, Ian McEwan. Ian McEwan wrote very morbid, macabre, you know, violent novels. And he has been called Ian Macab. Ian McEwan's First novel is The Cement Garden, which shows three children, they don't want to be orphaned, they don't want to go to the foster home, so when their mother dies, they encase her body in cement and put it in the, in the basement of the house. Oh my God, so uh, macabre, really. The Comfort of Strangers is about two men and one of them is slashing the other man in front of his wife, it, very violent, gory, all symptomatic of the modern uh, civilization, the lack of relationships, the uh, incompatibility of people, the child in time, the innocent, black dogs, enduring love, all famous novels of the early period, Amsterdam, Atonement, Saturday, these are later novels. Uh, Amsterdam won Booker Prize. Amsterdam is about a woman who is dying and four men in her life. Two of them decide to do euthanasia on each other, mercy killing for each other, if they get some fatal disease or such torture. But eventually they do kill each other, but not out of love and compassion. Uh, he has written a lot of recent novels also. I wish you would do your own research, look up this author, read on your own because whatever I look up and research, whatever I teach is not going to be your knowledge. So Ian McEwen is important. Do your own reading of the materials I give you. Another writer I am introducing is Martin Amis. Martin Amis is the son of our Kingsley Amis. And Martin Amis has written books like uh, Money, A Suicide Note, London Fields, Time's Arrow, etc. These are also very postmodern, violent, uh, uh, very, you know, uh, disturbing novels. Time's Arrow is about a German Holocaust doctor who is traveling back in time, reverse technology of his life. From adulthood, he is uh, moving into... Um, infancy. Can you imagine that? Uh, London Fields is also a black comedy. There are uh, elements of black comedy and uh, satire in all these novels. Peter Ackroyd is the next important writer. Uh, I have an eye infection, that's why, sorry. Uh, Peter Ackroyd is a postmodern writer. He is a very uh, strange writer who has incorporated a lot of um, elements from literature and writers, biographies, etc. in his uh, writing. The first novel that he wrote is The Great Fire of London. The Great Fire of London is important. It is based on uh, Dickens's Little Dorrit. Little Dorrit, the novel is being filmed and uh, um, the incidents in Little Dorrit are paralleling the incidents in the novel. 
Did you understand? The next novel is also interesting, The Last Testament of Oscar Wilde. It was written in the form of a fictitious diary that Oscar Wilde uh, uh, wrote uh, while he was living in Paris. Oscar Wilde had lived in Paris. Then uh, Hawks Moor is inspired by a poem and it is based on some churches that one Nicholas Hawks Moor has built. Uh, Chatterton is a story of our Chatterton, the poet who died very early. The House of Dr. D. Uh, the Canterbury Tales are retelling. These are other works. And uh, the last writer for today is Graham Swift. Not actually the last writer, one more is there. Graham Swift uh, has written, again, postmodern novels. His first novel is Last Orders. It is important because it won the Booker Prize. And um, the sweet shop owner, Shuttlecock, Waterland, these are other novels. Graham Swift's uh, Waterland is uh, set in the famous Fens region of East Anglia in England and it is considered a very major novel. They will ask you questions about it because it is a major textbook in taught in English uh, schools and colleges. Last Orders, Tomorrow, etc. other works. The last writer for today is uh, Hilary Mandel. Hilary Mandel uh, is twice Booker Prize winner. She has won Booker Prize for two novels of Thomas Cromwell trilogy, which are Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies. This is, uh, these are two novels of Thomas Cromwell trilogy. And she is um, a writer who has explored history, uh, you know, uh, uh, narrated history in a postmodern manner. You know that is called a historiographic metafiction. Her first novel was Every Day is Mother's Day. And uh, she has also written a number of other novels like Beyond Black, Flood, A Place of Greater St Safety, An Experiment in Love, etc. So, is on the diasporic writers in Britain. We thought of British literature always as the literature written by British writers. But in the post-war period, there has been a lot of uh, people from across the world emigrating into Britain. There is a huge influx of um, immigrants and today Britain is a very highly multicultural society. And uh, this diversity has become an essential part of British identity. Uh, many of these writers are obviously post-colonial writers and uh, include our own Salman Rushdie, V.S. Naipaul, etc. So, to look at the um, diasporic writers in Britain, we should start from Sam Selwyn probably. Sam Selwyn was a Trinidadian British writer and he moved to London in the 1950s and then after that to Canada. So, he's both there in Canada as well as Britain in the history of literature. Sam Selwyn uh, died in 1994 and uh, his first novel is A Brighter Sun, The Lonely Londoners, uh, Ways of Sunlight, Mosses Ascending. These are all novels where he represents West Indian people, uh, working class people, etc. and how they struggle uh, to make a living in London, in uh, England. V.S. Naipaul is a Nobel laureate born in 1932 and uh, he is a, an Indian, Trinidadian, British writer. He was educated in Port of Spain in Trinidad as well as in Oxford and he worked in BBC as the presenter of the famous BBC program Caribbean Voices. It is in Caribbean Voices that many of the Caribbean writers were first showcased and that is how they became writers eventually. Uh, Naipaul has got Booker Prize for the book In a Free State and that was in 1971 and he got the Nobel Prize in 2001. To talk about his uh, major novels, his early novels include The Mystic Masseur. Uh, you should understand that almost all of V.S. Naipaul's novels are highly comic and satiric. The Mystic Masseur is a story of uh, a man, a writer of Indian descent and he becomes um, 
high up in politics he becomes powerful by his talent in massaging the suffrage of elvira is a comic novel again set against the slapstick circumstances surrounding uh, an election then miguel street is a novel about characters living in miguel street all the characters are living in uh, war time port of spain in miguel street a house for mr biswas is a hilarious novel here uh, mohan biswas who is called throughout the novel in a comic manner as mr biswas he is a very unlucky boy he is born with six fingers and uh, he cannot go near water his father drowns because of him and he gets married into the tulsi family who lives in the hanuman house um, they have so many daughters in tulsi family and all of them are married to some uh, buddy or the other who will be helpful in their family business so this good for nothing painter of signs mohan biswas becomes the son in law of tulsi household you will think wow what a good luck but it is torture for him because he does not want to be oppressed by this family he wants independence he wants a house for of his own this house that he desires is a uh, metaphorical of his independence and this is also metaphorical of the post colonial situation the post colonial people want independence do they ever get complete independence is the question in the novel uh, biswas mr biswas is uh, not able to get his own house he spends all his life trying to make money and build his house and he loses everything he never has a proper family life he never makes money finally at the end of his life somehow he buys a, an overpriced badly built house and uh, dies happily that is the story of a house for mr biswas a flag on the island mimic men important novel is mimic men ralph singh is the protagonist uh, a flag on the island in a free state guerrillas in a free state uh, has a framing narrative and three short stories the novel begins with uh, the book begins with a journey to egypt and ends with a journey from sorry not from a journey to egypt again many years later so at the beginning and end of the book there are journeys to egypt guerrillas is a post colonial gothic novel jane and roch who are characters from jane air are going to live in thrush cross grange which is a house from wuthering heights a bend in the river is set in an unnamed african country and it uh, depicts partition the enigma of arrival half a life and magic seeds these are all later novels uh, half a life and magic seeds are companion novels hey he has written a trilogy of travel logs about india india uh, trilogy it is called an area of darkness india a wounded civilization and india a million mutinies now these three novels depicted india in a very negative light and we indians don't like that trilogy the next important writer is salman rushdie salman rushdie born in 1947 and uh, started his career with grimas 1975 science fiction novel it is it is a bizarre novel about one uh, red indian called Sla flapping eagle he is falling uh, down the pacific ocean and uh, uh, becoming immortal etc midnight children is a magnificent novel that shows the story of salim sunai uh, and his family against the history of india and the neighboring countries of india the indian subcontinent it is steeped in uh, satire and dark humor uh, and uh, social commentary and criticism salim sinai is one of the midnight children born at the stroke of midnight uh, when india got independent and all these people have telepathic power i mean special powers salim sinai has also telepathic powers and uh, his body and its uh peculiarities symbolize india itself and like india is falling apart after emergency etc salim sinai's body is also disintegrating and falling apart and he is telling the story to his wife padma would be wife padma uh before his body completely disintegrates it is a magnificent novel i cannot give you a summary in 2 minutes i cannot even give you a summary in 1 hour or even 2 hours 
brilliant novel you should read the novel once twice thrice if you can watch the movie but the movie is very different from the novel in the sense it does not contain the entire novel but it is magnificent i hope i will be able to give you a detailed presentation on lecture on midnight children some day because i love this novel another famous novel by salman rushdi is the moor's last sigh it is set in bombay and cochin and it is a story of morais so goibi uh who is like a you know a monstrous character he um tells the story of his four generations and he is a very peculiar like salim sinai he is a very peculiar uh, character whose physical body is aging twice as fast as a normal person's body does he also has a deformed hand etc the ground beneath her feet is a novel uh, strangely interlacing the orpheus eurydice myth uh, with uh, the story that is told fury is the story of malik solanka who has discovered a little puppet called uh, little brain and he is going on television with this puppet and whatever happens to him after that shalimar the clown is another historical novel set in uh, india again in, in uh, not exactly india it is in kashmir northern part of india only and uh, also in los angeles the protagonist of shalimar the clown is india and she is the illegitimate child of maximilian offals uh, this is obviously a satire on india the enchantress of florence is partly set in akbar's court uh, harun and the sea of stories is a a uh, children's book imaginary homelands is a collection of essays critical essays where he talks about nations and post coloniality uh, luca and the fire of life is also a children's book but don't dismiss these books as children's book because they are sometimes prescribed in universities some other important diasporic writers are timothy mo who wrote the monkey king and sour sweet then hanif qureshi who an afghan um, partly pakistan not afghan pakistani british writer who wrote the buddha of suburbia intimacy etc he has also written a number of screen plays carol phillips the caribbean british writer who wrote the final passage um, a state of innocence crossing the sorry a state of independence crossing the river etc monica ali who wrote brick lane brick lane is about the bangladeshi community in london Uh, bordering on the story of Nazneen and Zadie Smith. Zadie Smith has written a few novels. Some of them are very important. One is White Teeth. It is focuses on a Bangladeshi and a British man, two friends. Then uh, On Beauty is also important. Zadie Smith's On Beauty is set in London and it offers a very realistic, truthful picture of London. Uh, it is uh, all. It it is. It was shortlisted for. man booker price the autograph man uh, northwest etc there are many more diasporic writers kazuo ishiguro uh, lives in britain he is the nobel laureate the author of never let me go uh, and um, remains of the day pat barker then ben okri lives in uh, england ben okri is the author of uh, the famished road the booker prize winning prize which is the story of an abiku or spirit child called azaro uh, he has written a trilogy songs of enchantment infinite riches uh, uh, these these are all important novels by ben okri so please do some reading and do your tests that brings us to the end of not only this lecture but also british literature thank you very much